Alicia Kelly. I'm a um, biology teacher here at Short Up Idea High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today's class was uh, we going over meiosis. It was an introduction to that, and then uh, ultimately we tried to make sure that they understood the process so that they understand how inheritance takes place. Again, you're gonna go through the activity. You're gonna write everything in your journal. Okay, you're gonna get to a checkpoint. If everybody in the group's ready for the checkpoint. I'm going to so the goal today was for them to go through meiosis, go through the internet lesson. Instead of me lecturing, they had to experience it in four different formats. So they had a little video m movie and then a narrated movie. Then they had to draw out some pictures of how that looked. So it was like cartoon animation that they had to go through to make sure they knew it. And then they did a comparison between mitosis that they already had gone over in meiosis, which we went through today. So if you look on the site, the links work. So make sure you click on the site one, that link, and then go through and answer the questions. Okay? Any questions? Yes, sir. What did you think of what? Six. Six? Six? Yeah. It's three. I put only one head. Yeah, that's what I put on one. It's three right here. Right where? Right. <laughs> Only one half of the double oh. chromosome, so three chromosomes are each part of the cell. Yeah, that's what she just read. That's what that's it is. That's what, what she is it said. She, it said uh, how many chromosomes yeah, are at each pole of cell. But it just repeated what she just said when she read it. Hold on. Only one half of the double chromosomes go to each pole. The question asks, how many chromosomes are at each pole of cell? Okay. What is, three it's the same thing. It's three thing. chromosomes. Um, the who can explain crossing over? Who might want to explain crossing over? I can try. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I guess they took like one half of it, well not one half, but you know, something like that, and like took it and put it on the opposite side of the other chromosome, okay. and then did vice versa to the same one. Okay, so they just switched. Switched like half of it. From, okay. I mean, a metaphase too. Where do the cells line up? The cells membrane? Well, we had checkpoints so that I could see that they were... Um, it was sort of like an informal assessment of what they should have gotten during that section. So I divided it up by, they had four sites that they were going to, and so I divided the checkpoints by sites. So the first site, I had some very basic information that we went through, so I made sure that when I questioned the whole group that they had that. And then the second checkpoint was the same thing. And the goal was to have them completed as a group at the, and I do the checkpoint as a group so that I could kind of see where the group was. And, they, and, they, and it makes them talk to make sure that their other classmates are on, top, on target so within that group. So that's kind of the checkpoint. I don't want to just check one person because then they, you know, they just go off and leave and there's no discussion or collaboration. So I'm like, well, turn your cup on red once everybody in the group is finished. But they were allowed to move on while they waited for the other people. So they weren't just sitting there waiting. So they had enough to do to keep Thank moving you. on until the checkpoint came. Okay. <laughs> During telephase two, chromosomes again decondense and nuclear membranes reform. All right, chromosome decondense. They just said something about a nucleus. And something else. Hold on. Opposite poles of the cell. During telophase 2, chromosomes again decondense and nuclear membranes reform. And nuclear membranes reform. Nuclear membranes reform? Yeah. Okay, you guys, this, we should Nuclear be what? close to oh, membrane. at least on number 20 right now so we can finish up 20, 25. So we're going to put some more time up here, but we, you need Click. to kind of...
to a conclusion. Push yourself so we can get through this. Um, it's a conclusion. Each of the four daughter cells produced by Bantosis is. Um, I, unique. I'm going to go with unique. No, don't go with unique. I'm don't you playing. say uniqueness? No. Uniqueness. Kayla, I don't. I can't rely on your thoughts, okay? Because sometimes you don't work with me. You can stop. Every time I be thinking right, it be right. Oh, it's saying right there. Okay, that's what I have to say. Nah, you ain't. No, that ain't what you got to say. Click the quiz. Click what the quiz. Oh, quiz. Thank you. Okay, with respect, those to my socials, my DNA with piece of curse. When do DNA wrap up the. When do they. Hmm. Before interface. Okay. You had that already. Okay. Woo, I got that right. Oh, I gotta do this on the computer. No, you don't. You gotta write it on your thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Kayla, you gotta write it down. You embarrassing us on the screen. Why not? Wait, 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 wait. You gonna write the question. What's 23? That's you. Maybe because I don't have a Unique. cell phone, we can't communicate. No, I don't think that's it. I, I think that's it. Nope. When well, you had a phone, you didn't talk. We did communicate. You never texted me back. I did. You did not. You texted me once. No. And I didn't text back. So we have a couple of groups that are on there. Um, last section, I need you there. I need those drawings. I need the exit ticket. We finished out with the exit ticket. And they had to tell me three things they learned, two things that they still weren't quite sure of, and then one thing that they could teach somebody else in the classroom. So the goal was to go have the things that they teach, that people who could teach certain things, hopefully that they would be able to help the uh, kids who had questions, under teach it in a different way so they would understand it. So that's kind of the goal of the exit ticket, was so that we could go back, look at, okay, who understood this and said they could teach it, then they could pair up with the kids that didn't understand that topic. So that's kind of the way I wanted that to go, to have more teachers in the classroom than me. Because sometimes the kids will, um, they can teach it better. They can make it uh, more understandable in a different way than I can. So that, I always like to use that. And I'm like, oh, that's a good, that's a good way to put that. So next time I'll use that to, you know, I'll, I'll say that next time. So you can learn from them sometimes. Up here, asexual reproduction. They explain the difference, but they ain't put the asexual in it, I guess. Oh, Baby in here, I guess. So, what is it? So, so the asexual reproduction requires me. What y'all just read? Right? No. Nah. Uh, or the, uh, in sexual repro yeah. in sexual reproduction, haploid and so If I had to teach this without technology, I would have to do be more book based, and it would just probably be one or two learning styles. We wouldn't have been able to hit all of them. So one thing I would probably do is do a 4J activity. I like to do called Stump the Teacher. And that makes it, and what they have to do, we read the section, and then they ask me questions with the book closed, and they can win point, get points, you know, points for their, on their next quiz or something. And then I open the book, and I ask them questions. And if they answer correctly, then they can. So it's an it's a engaging way of using a textbook. And it comes from 4J, which is one of the trainings we do with high schools at work. And then after that, I would probably have them do some kind of, um, a flip book, like I, where they make it, write out meiosis and they draw it at each stage and then they put it together and flip it and it shows it going through the phases. So that's what I would have done if I didn't have the technology that I do have, which I'm happy to have. So. They, they really, really get engaged. And one of the kids gave a prime example from my class. He's like, now if Miss Kelly asked us for a piece of paper, Almost none of us would turn it in. But if she, we get on the computer and she said, email me this, we all do it. He said, because the technology is engaging and stuff that we already do, and we like it, so we're more likely to do the work than if we just have to sit there and it kind of gets boring with the pencil paper.